This week, I will teach you guys how to do a simple business card design in Photoshop. So hey guys, welcome back to a new design tutorial. My name is Manny and like always, you can find me on Facebook at Retail Pro. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys another business card design. I know we showed this before, but today's is a bit newer and a bit more refined and a better design overall. So yeah, I'm gonna work with some fonts, again, the different uh, icons here and also take an existing logo and just change that into a new and more modern looking logo. So yeah, let's get right away into the tutorial. It's a good one. Okay, so over in Photoshop, you guys can see here on the right hand side, again, I have a layers palette already open and also a group. And I wanna show you guys how to design this. I do not want to show you guys how to design this logo. This is an existing logo. I just rechanged this a little bit and made it a bit more modern. If you guys want to see a tutorial about that, do let me know in the comments down below. I'm keen to create something like that for you then. Okay, so let's start right away out with the first step. Um, basically, it depends on what canvas size you want. So for my client now, he wanted a certain canvas size over here. So if, let's go to image, image size over here, or even canvas size will also do. And if I go to centimeters, you guys can see that it's 8.5 to 5.5 on the height and width, obviously 8.5. So this was my size. Um, so there are a few different sizes out there. You can have a look a little bit on Google, what size you would like to take or if you maybe have a business card, everybody has some business cards lying around, try to have a look at that card and the size. And then you start right away out with fill, a uh, file, sorry, you go to new and you go over here and create under the custom settings. So under preset custom, you can go to centimeter, inches, millimeters, whatever you prefer. Maybe you want to have inches. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with centimeters and then you just type it in here and type in your sizes. So maybe it's 5.5 .5 by whatever, 6.8 or 8.7, something like that. Okay, just remember it's a comma, not a dot. Then 300 DPI resolution, so you have a nice high quality. And yes, background contents, you can start with white if you want. Just hit OK, and you can see there is our card. So not working at all. We have the wrong sizes, but anyways, you guys get what I'm meaning. So this is how you create your canvas, first of all. And then you can obviously open your layer, double click on here, open it, and you can start right away with the first layers, which I will do now again on my second screen over here. So let's cancel this canvas again. So it's very simple, just create a canvas size. And once you're ready, you should have it completely on white. Okay, so the next step that I will do is go to view, new guides, 50% um, horizontal guideline here. Also, if you're completely new to this, have a look on the channel. I've created a few more tutorials teaching you how to get into the guidelines and also the basics for this. Let's go back to view again, new guide and vertical this time. I'm also going to say 50% over here to place a guideline again. Okay, great. Now we have again a centerpiece. So we know this is our center of the card. So half of this card here, this area, I want to use again for just typing the text, the name of the client, um, what position he's in the company, his telephone number, website, email, and the address, the normal stuff you put onto the business card. And then on the left-hand side over here, I want to place again more the branding and create a simple logo. Yeah, kind of just obviously place the branding and have a simple design there. Okay, let's press Command D, get out of the selection. I'm also working with a Mac. If you're a Windows person, please press Control when I say Command. Okay, great. So that's my first step now. So just white canvas. Then we can maybe, I'm going to do this quite quickly. Take a bit more time when you do this. So it's a bit more refined. For me, first of all, I need to have the logo. So I normally start out right away with the logo. Let's just go over here and find logo company. I'm going to move this all the way to the top. Okay, and this is our logo. Let me just quickly create another layer here. This is just for a reference quickly. So you guys can see this is almost what the logo looks like and the size. So normally I also spend time and look at the logo colors, what they have. So this is what I actually received. Um, again, it was gray inside, then white or black, the logo, the starker and manufacturing and air conditioning CC, that would be normally black. Uh, I changed it to white, but the logo had gray in here and also over here, this little bit of a greenish color with two keys. So this 
yeah, well, it's more greenish, I think. That's the color that the logo was. So I decided to right away go with a color cast into that direction. Let me actually show this to you guys. As you guys can see over here, worked again with the same color that we have here from these tools, the summer of the green type of style. Zoom out a little bit again. Okay, so as you guys can see, here is again our before layer. So this is just our normal canvas now for all of you who are new. Just the canvas, and then I dropped in the logo. Remember, the logo needs to be a PNG type of logo, so again, that the background can shine through and that you can place the logo on top. So I started out right away with a rough design. Either sometimes we use uh, round selections or again with the pen tool, try to build something, which I'm also going to do now. So I'm going to select the pen tool over here. And let me just go and have a look reference-wise again. Maybe I'll do another guideline first. So go to the Move tool, and you guys can see the rulers here. If you guys don't have the rulers, simply go to View and select Rulers over here. Then select the Move tool, and I might want to place um, somewhere over here one anchor point with the guidelines and one over here. So this is very rough now. I'm going to explain in a minute. This, these guidelines are just here to help me to build a little bit of a straight line and to decide until where will I put my endpoints. Okay, like I said, I'm not calculating anything here. When you do this, please calculate and uh, check that these steps are exactly the same, otherwise it won't work. Okay, on a new layer, I'm just going to select the pen tool and first of all, I'm going to place an anchor point now over here. Okay, my first anchor point is set. I'm going to continue and do maybe one over here. Maybe a little bit up, actually. Another anchor point over here. And go all the way back to here. And I can complete this again. So just clicking on the last anchor point, that will complete the path. Also, if you're new to the pen tool, have a look on the channel as a tutorial teaching you all the steps you need to know to work with the pen tool. Now, you guys can see that this is not accurate at all. I'm going to hold Command now on the keyboard and select this anchor point over here. Okay, it's also giving me the guideline, so maybe let's just drag the guideline away a little bit. And I might just use this up a little bit, still have, keeping that straight. So again, calculate this. These areas need to be exactly the same, this length and this length, so this is all straight for your design too. Okay, let's also accept that. And I'm just going to take the guideline back. Okay, great. So that will be my first layer. So again, having a little stripe over here. On that layer 18, which is then again our new layer now, I'm just going to click right-click with the pen tool while I have the pen tool selected. Right-click, make a selection, zero feathering, OK. And now I'm going to press M inside of that, or just M for the marking tool, rectangular marking tool or elliptical, that doesn't matter. Now inside of that selection, I'm going to hit right-click and say fill. Okay, with fill, I'm going to go to color and I need to select the color still. I'm not sure yet exactly the color because obviously I want to play a little bit with this. But it was something with this green here. Okay, let's just select anything right now. I'm going to say OK, OK, and that will be selected. I'm going to press Command D in order to get out of the selection. So press Command D here again. And now for the next step, what I want to do is put again, take the Move tool, put a little guideline till here and here and my next line should go from here down to here and up again so maybe these uh, sizes here are not accurate to these like I said before take a bit more time and calculate exactly on the ruler here the length of this this and this up here otherwise it's not accurate okay create a new layer select the pen tool I'm just going to press P on the keyboard set an anchor point set one down here another one Okay, that is not accurate down here. So let's just try, and I'm going to fix that in a moment. So from this anchor point onwards, up, and completing the path in order of just clicking here the last anchor point again with the pen tool. Okay, so that is completed. I'm going to go all the way down here, and you guys can see here is my mess up. Uh, that does not work at all. So again, the pen tool, hold command on the keyboard, and select this anchor point. And again, it's interfering with our guideline. So move that to the side. And now I'm just going to drag it all the way down so it's out of frame. Let's zoom out. And again, it's a bit big, but yeah, I'm going to work with that right now. Okay, then P for the pen tool, right click, make a selection, zero feathering, M for the marking tool. And inside of that selection, I'm going to say fill. 
And this time we can choose the same color if we want, or we can go a little bit lighter or darker. Let's go a little bit lighter. Okay, Command D, and out of the selection. So right away you guys can see it looks like kind of effect of a little stripe here that has been bent. You can either move this down in order for you to have this on the top, or again, if you want to here, new two maybe, let's rename that. You can have that on top or at the bottom. Great, so I want it at the bottom, and then now, obviously, I want to fill this area still for the logo. So let's select this, and we're also going to work with our colors in a moment. Okay, let's just select here the logo copy, so we can move over a little bit. This, will, this we can do in a bit. First, let's go to view, clear the guides, and now I want to fill this complete area, and that's super simple. Under the new two layer here, to select the new layer icon from down here. You can move that all the way to the bottom. And if you want, you can also rename this right away to background color or anything that you want. Then press P on the keyboard. I'm going to go back into the pen tool mode, put an anchor point over here, 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 and very roughly just go with my path and completing the path. Great. Now, right click again, make a selection, zero feathering, and it's obviously underneath. So now we're going to select the final color. This time the logo is activated already, so I can this time also select the right color, which is this one. Okay, so with my foreground color picker here, I might just go over to the logo. Yep, and that's still not the true colors, but let's select with that. Okay, marking tool from the left hand side, right click inside the selection, fill, and you can also here say foreground color over here. Okay, command D, get out of the selection. And right away, you guys can see that we have the same color as our logo over here. So first of all, the logo stands out. I'm going to select the logo group over here. Take the Move tool. You can also do this with the cursors if you want. And place this somewhere over here. Great. Now this works for me, but still, these stripes over here do not have the same color. Okay? So what I'll do is, first of all, on the new layer, double-click in order for us to get into the layer styles. Now, under Layer Styles, I'll go to Color Overlay, and in here, you guys can see the gray also works nicely already with the logo, so please pay a lot of attention to the color schemes. Okay, under the co uh, Color Overlay here, under Blending Mode Normal, in the gray patch, just double-click into this window, and I'm going to select the same color now with the eyedropper tool from our background. But remember, I want this to stand out, so I might just push it down here a little bit, in order to get darker, but we're still in the same color tones almost. It's not really green, green like I selected before. Okay, and okay, great. So that is done. Now do the same effect again for layer new two. Okay, double tap, color overlay, into here, select the same color, and this time I'm just going to pick it up and go in a lighter version. Yep, and a little bit more maybe. This totally depends up to you. So now you guys can see that this, these two colors here Play a little bit better together with the background color. I'm going to say OK and OK. OK, so that is basically our start now. Again, now you have your logo and your background rate. And you can repeat these steps as much as you like. You can also play with the opacities and change things around a little bit. The next step that I want to do actually right away, let me just move this a bit to the side so you guys can see the layers palette, which I find very important when you do a lot of editing here is that you basically put everything together in groups right away just to keep things simpler like you guys can see over here otherwise you'll just have ton of layers later and you don't know what's cooking so again with shift i'm going to press the background layer maybe actually let's do this a different way hold command press background color new two and new hold keep on holding command and now i'm going to press command and g together in order to put it in a group. So for the Windows people, again, Control. Then, right away, I'm going to call this Background Layer, or Layout. Sorry, actually, Layout. Okay. And you know what? I'm also going to take my layers back into my workflow here. Great. So again, you guys can see here's our canvas. Let's actually minimize this so you don't see this. Canvas, white background layer. Then we have our logo over here. Logo copy. This might you get, this you will most probably get from the client or have changed this um, yeah, this depends on to you. Then the background over here, and now let's get to the next stage that I still want to do. So this will be now again, filter, sorry, view, new guide, and again, horizontally, no, vertically, I want to pay 
uh, make a guideline 50% horizontally. So here's our lines though. This is a little bit small. I would actually make this a bit bigger, but again, like I said, it's quickly here for the tutorial. So you guys can see how to do it. The scaling is not perfect. I would sit longer on this to get this perfect scale and the perfect sizes for the whole card. Now let's select the text tool over here. I'm going to also go all the way back to the top. So we start fresh here with the layers and just make a big selection. And first of all, I'm going to write now the name of the person. So it might be whatever the boss or some employee that works there. Richard Starke like that. Great. Now I just want to select another font. Let's select everything. And I'm going to go with Helvetica Neue font, just because it looks very clean and straightforward. Okay, over on the character box, if you guys don't have the character box, go to window and select the character box over here. Please tick it. Okay, so under the character box, I'm going to switch off the italic mode. And I'm not going to use the uh, bold mode over here. This I will use right away on the font itself. Okay, also spacing too much. I'm going to go here to the font styles and go with bold, just normal bold. Great. Because their logo looks quite boldish and also this font works really nicely with the, this font over here. So that's why I also pick this font. But normally for business cards, I try to be very simple and straightforward with the business card designs. Now select everything. I'm going to go to the tracking here and just push the name a little bit more together. So it just looks a bit closer. Okay, more refined. And now obviously this is the, um, his first name. And then this is the second name. And this one I will just do with a light mode. So let's go over here and just select light. Maybe that might be a little bit too much. Let's actually go with it. Okay, so last step is still selecting the right color. So for this, again, black or gray. For me, it's a, a win situation here because I can just go into the color picker area and select the gray that we have here from the existing logo. If you want to, I could actually push it down a little bit more just to stand out a little bit more, but in this case, I will go with the same gray as we have over here. Okay, and accept it. And now maybe let's actually try this if I'm gonna use the, another guideline here. Let's move it over here, take the move tool and the layer Richard Starke and move this somewhere into the center. Again, remember, take a bit more time when you do this, place the guidelines correctly, not like me, just anywhere. Maybe you wanna calculate the center also with another guideline over here, which I'm not gonna do now. Then I'm gonna uh, duplicate this layer in order for me to work quicker. Then I don't need to go back in and create the same font, same color, search for everything, it's just quicker. So I'm gonna press Command J, duplicate this layer over here. As you guys can see, Richard Star copy. This will be now maybe just the position or something. I'm just going to write post. Then move that down. Obviously select the text tool. Select the whole font. And maybe I want to continue with this very um, thin font over here. So I'm just going to delete the front part. And he will be most probably also the managing director or something. Okay, managing. And I'm going to... Yeah, this you obviously need to find out before you do the card. So managing director, we have this over here. Uh, I think I'm also happy with the spacing. Maybe sometimes then I will have another look at the spacing a little bit further apart and making it nice and small. So let's go with something like this. Size is a bit smaller. Accept and move this a little bit over. Okay. And place that somewhere over here. Great, so again, Richard Starke, and then you have Managing Director, so the position is right away as well. I'm going to take this guideline, move it down a little bit. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit here, so we get it right away onto this point over here. Zoom out, and now, let's also create a group right away. So this is Post, and Richard Starke, the name, I'm going to select it with Command, press Command G together, and just write here, Text, and then maybe Name. So right now, right away, what this is on my card. Okay, duplicate this, we can do that in a moment. I'm gonna create a new layer from here. Okay, new layer, I'm gonna go to the marking tool, the rectangular marking tool, and just make a rough selection over here. Wait, first, I'm gonna take the move tool and select another guideline until here, so I want to start and create a little block over here. So let's take the rectangular marking tool, I'm gonna click into here and make a nice selection. Something like this. This doesn't need to be perfect, can be in any room that you like. Okay, 
I'm going to hit right click inside of that selection and say fill. Again with our foreground color here, just say OK. Command D, get out of the selection. And now we can continue also with our other elements like the telephone numbers, the web addresses and the normal addresses. So for that, easy again, new layer over here. And I'm going to create circles. So this time elliptical marking tool. And I'm just going to hold shift on the keyboard so it's equally expanding. I'm going to make a nice small um, circle here again. I'm doing this quite quickly. This might be too small or too big. For now, I'm not sure. I'm going to hit right click inside of that selection, say fill, fill up with the foreground color and press command D in order to get out of the selection. Now, I'm going to duplicate this for three times or another two times, so I have three different dots. So command J, duplicate this once and again command J to duplicate it a third time. Okay. Take layer 19 copy and just with the move tool, I'm just going to move this down somewhere over here. And then somewhere over here, the third circle. And until now, I'm not sure where I'm going to place it. I need to work the text a little bit to see this. Now, there's another technique that I want to show you guys how to get some really cool icons in here. You can simply just go onto Google and type into Google um, something like location icon. And then right away, you will find something like this, for instance. So this I'm dragging right away out, out of the web browser into Photoshop. So over here you can see it still has a white background and I need to work a little bit on this. So this is my first icon. Then I went back and found another one, which is called again a world icon or internet icon. And the last one that I still want is a phone icon. Great. So they all have white in the background and I need to get rid of that. Obviously they will be super small. So it's all right if we can just copy it straight from the internet and just use the icon like that. There are also a ton of websites that sell professional icons and also that give you more in-depth or better icons. So yeah, if you want to go for that, you can also have a look up, have a look for professional icons. Um, let's start right away with the phone here. I'm just going to select my magic one tool. And over here, select everything that is white on that picture. And as you guys can see, it already just clears out everything that I don't want. Now, I'm going to hit right click and say select inverse. So it's basically just selecting the phone. Or let's actually try it the different way around. I'm going to just say delete. Okay, command D, get out of the selection. Let's actually kill both of these. Yeah, we can just delete it like that. And the edges also look good so far. Sometimes the edges don't look good then I would go back in and find another icon. So that's my first one. Then the second over here, select with W, the magic one tool. Okay, you need to just be on the right layer. Select that. And these little areas over here, we're going to select all of them and hit delete again. Okay, command D, get out of the selection. And we have to have a look. Here is a little bit of white left that I'll most probably retouch quickly out. Here at the top, it's better so I'm going to zoom in all the way, just take the eraser and clean out this area over here. So like I said, sometimes it's better to find a little bit of better icon as well. Okay, and E for the eraser. And just brushing this out a bit. Okay, great. That's it. Zoom out. Add that to the side. Next last icon will be again... W on the keyboard for the magic one tool and delete everything. Command D, get out of the selection. And E for the eraser to erase this little guy over here. Great. So that's a way. Now what I will start doing is obviously I want to have them also on white. I don't want them to be black on this circle. So again, I'm going to press, press command E in order for this uh, just to invert it. You guys can see now I also have a little bit of an edge. If I'll make this small quickly. Have a look if one sees that. If not, then I'll just leave it like that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so what I'll do now is press Command T on the keyboard. And this will bring you into the transform mode. I'm going to hold Shift on the keyboard, very important, and select an anchor point here from the corners. And now, equally, it's a degrading here. And I can make it nice and small and put it maybe here at the bottom because I'm going to have location as the last. Maybe nice and small like that. Okay and place that here. Great. And the same step I'm going to repeat now just for the world icon. So again, command I, 
And okay, the edge is really hard here. Let's press Command T. Have a look if I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. And also hold Shift. A little bit smaller, a little bigger again, and accept that and move it all the way to the top. So it doesn't look too nice. Stealing a little bit of the black. Area. Simple technique here, double click onto the layer, get you back into the layer start. And now with stroke, you're going to select stroke option. First of all, set the color to white. Okay. And now on the position, you go to inside. Great. And then not eight pixels, just one pixel. Okay. So now you guys can see without the effect, here we have a bit of a different effect. You're getting rid of these black lines here. So again, before or before and after, before and after. So that looks a bit better. We can also repeat that process actually for this location icon. Simple, just right click on here onto the layer, say copy layer style, and on layer 20, right click, paste layer style. So again, that's also set in there now. Great, so last step, again, doing obviously the same process once more with the phone inverted. Then we can also right away say paste layer style, and we can press Command T in order to get to the transform mode. Hold Shift, anchor point, and slowly scale it down. Move that over here. I'm going to accept it first of all, just so I can see the effect. It's still too big. Command T again. Windows people press uh, always Control when I say Command. Don't forget that. And I might even make it a bit smaller though and accept it. Okay, and that I'll put to the top. Like I said, take a bit more time when you guys do this. Great, so that's it. Uh, last step that I will stu still do now is just get obviously all the information, telephone numbers and everything, website and also the email addresses. So what I'll do with this is first of all, go back here to Managing Director, select this with the text tool or you can go and search it in the Layers palette and I will duplicate this again with Command J and maybe take it out of the text name here, take it all the way to the top and place it over here. Now. Let's actually group things again. So layer 22, layer 21, 20, and all these other layers here are our new background elements here for the card. Again, I've selected everything while holding Command. I'm going to now press Command G, put it together in a group, and just write here maybe second layout. Okay, for the design at the back. Great, so this will be our new text. We can right away put a new uh, text group here. So just write text um, to or whatever you want to. So first of all, post copy with the move tool. Take this all the way down. So this will be somewhere over here. I'm going to select the text tool. Select this. I'm going to stick with the same color schemes again. As you guys can also saw, see here, I've uh, sticked with the same colors again all the way throughout the card. Again, select the managing director text. First of all, we're going to go under the character box and set this back to zero. Standard size. Then under the options here of the font, I'm going to go with regular. So it just stands out a bit. And then the size, maybe it will be four or five. That depends. But watch out that it doesn't get too small. So when you print it, that the card that you can't really read it anymore. Okay, accept it. I think I can also take the second layout here. Just take the move tool and the whole group, just with my cursor, is a little bit to the left. And also... Yeah, make these a little bit to the left. Again, you guys can see the top part moved with. So literally just go in here and select again with the move tool. You're just taking it back here with the cursors. Okay, great, like so. Then while I'm here, let's uh, first actually do the text. I'm gonna post copy and I'm gonna write here telephone number. So first of all, select the manager director text. I'm gonna write now tell for the phone number, like so. And I'm just going to write now something here. It won't be the right number, but anyways, just something that could work. Okay, so say this is the phone number, then I first do the spacing for the international call numbers, and then again for the regional ones. Okay, then what I will do now is just select the first part over here and switch this to bold, so people can see it quicker with their eyes and it just stands out a little bit. Okay, bold, let's try extra bold. So, and accept that, great. And then I'm gonna move it a bit to the front. Okay, and we're still with regular with the size five. 
That should be good. Okay, maybe you have two numbers. Then you can just duplicate this obviously again with command J and do the same effect again. Maybe this will be now mobile instead of work related, whatever you need it for. Okay, accept and then obviously just type in the new numbers in the back. Now, super easy, just press command J, duplicate these layers and continue. And also if you want to take another guideline out, you can also place another guideline over here. So you may be right away with the text at the top. Okay, so you stay in a line here. Okay, let's also move mobile over. This might be now email and website. So first of all, I'm going to change this to email. And then maybe it would be Josh or Richard at Starker, whatever email that is, dot com. Okay, accept that and duplicate it again with command J. Take the move tool. Literally move this down a little bit. It's super quick to do this. Just write again now, maybe web. And you can write here, I don't know, starker.com. You can also, I do really just put it with a www, not the HTTPH. They so, so just starker.com. Great. And then just try the selecting a bit. So it always stands out in the front and at the back. Then last step again, just duplicate with command J again, move it all the way down to the bottom. And you can either write now a PO box, the address, whatever it is. Maybe it is South Africa or it's Namibia here. So this I would write without capital letters. Let's actually go with South Africa. Yeah. And whatever. Street name. Josh Street. Let's actually do this the way around. You guys know how to type this normal sending address, obviously. But this time, I'm not going to do it in capital letters. This, I will also just put in normal regular. Okay. So accept it. And then you obviously add the whole address, business address, and everything that you need. I don't want to give everything price here. Yeah. Anyways, so everything is in here. You can say view, clear the guides. And last step that I will still do now is just combine all these three dots here with each other. Or if you don't want to, you can also leave it without. I'm going to go to second layout. And just go down a little bit. Over here, layer 18. Let's make a new group. And just with the marking tool, uh, the rectangular marking tool, I'm just going to make a rough selection in here, like so. And this I'm totally depending on my eye now. I'm not really calculating where the center is and anything. Inside of that selection, right click, fill, and foreground color, yes, OK. Command D, get out of the selection again. You can now also have a look. This is your rough design so far. And what I would do now, which I'm not going to do for the tutorial, but what I would do in real life now is go in and check my spacing a little bit. So this is a little bit too small. Let's actually go over here and create a new quick layer so I can show it to you guys with a brush and talk a little bit over this. So first of all, maybe this is a bit too small. I would make everything nice and big. So the scaling starts now again. Then as well, this whole element also a little bit bigger scale it over to this size. Since I still have so much free space here in my whole card system. So I would now take a bit more time and scale this up. This was obviously a bit quicker here for the tutorial again. Yeah, then also select all of the groups, press command G, and you can maybe write here a uh, third design or something. I'm just going to three design and that's it. Okay, so let's also quickly have a look here at my first design. I know now you guys will actually see the numbers and everything, but that doesn't really matter. So you guys can see here is the first logo design. Obviously, the logo is now missing, is addresses and everything, and then obviously my quick design now without the full addresses. And again, the logo over here. So let's actually take this out. I want to show it to you properly. Move it in here, and I can show it to you like this. Great, so let's switch this on and we can switch this off over here. There you go, and you guys can see that as well. So super easy tutorial how to do this. Again, anybody can design this. You don't need Illustrator if you just want to create a quick design with this. And yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, so as you guys can see, again, this is not too hard to do. And you can also have a look down below in the description. I've added again a Tronix Media Design package for you guys, which you can download in order to get some of these fonts and also some of the icons. 
So yeah, thanks again for watching guys. Like always, if you like the content, don't forget to hit me up with a thumbs up. Share it with all your buddies who are interested in creating their own logos or designs. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching guys. I'll catch you all in the next design tutorial. And if you want to see the most <laughs> you should just check here on the right side. A few more tutorials just for you. I know I can't sing for shit. But anyway, here are some more tutorials. See you guys.